Hello, I'm Jacob. This is the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. Today is Tactical Tuesday, and I'm going to talk to you about how to pack your bag. If you take any 10 people, save maybe some of the AT trail guys, military included, and you go on a good little uh, bug out trip or ruck march, if you dumped out their bags, eight of them would shock you. How you pack your bag is very, very important. And so if you went on this trip with 10 people, like I said, eight of their bags would be absolutely terrible. And at least one person would be injured because of it if you're going on a good distance little trip, at least one. And uh, a lot of times they might think that uh, they became injured because of genetics or they're out of shape. A lot of times it's most likely comes straight down to how they pack their bag. The problem is, like I mentioned, even with military guys, nobody ever taught them how to pack their bag. They never really thought about it and they didn't know anything was wrong. So today we're gonna fix that. We're gonna talk about packing a bag, whether it be a rucksack, an assault bag, or an R&R &R bag. And uh, hopefully, if you don't know how to pack your bag, you'll never have that issue again. And we can avoid those injuries that, as I mentioned, are so easily avoidable. What we're going to talk about is the two key factors to packing your bag. The first is weight distribution and the second is parasitic drag. So what I'm going to do, I have laid out um, my bag's contents here. Uh, I'm going to tell you what each item is and where I got all of it. To be honest, most of it is from Amazon. Um, and I'm going to talk about why I lay it out in such a manner. So uh, this bag is from the Hidden Woodsman. Um, Hidden Woodsman is my favorite pack company, hands down, simply the hiddenwoodsman.com. This is a 20 liter pack, so it's small. Um, so what we're gonna do with weight distribution is try and make this as simple as possible. You want, as a male, men and women need to pack their bags differently when it comes to weight distribution. As a male, you want all of your weight as high in the pack and as close to your back as possible. So what that means is that I'm going to pack my lightweight stuff on the bottom and on the outside on the top. And this area right here is what I'm going to designate for my weight. For instance, if I was carrying like say an ASIP radio or a bunch of ammo, that's where I want that weight. Certainly not at the bottom of the pack. So um got this dumb tarp here from Harbor Freight uh, until I can afford one from Wilderness Innovations. Um, I've got a sleeping pad. I spent like the last four years without a sleeping pad ever since my pad in the military got stolen. So even the end of my military experience was without a pad. And uh, a pad goes a very, very long way to keeping you warm at night. So I'm gonna be doing a review on this. It's excellent, uh, again, from Amazon. Um, snug pack, jungle bag. Um, I got this pack, this bag while I was in the military because someone stole my uh, summer weight bag and it's absolutely phenomenal. I don't know how I haven't done a review on it. Again, Amazon, it's freaking fantastic. I'm actually gonna reorder this here. This is a Stanley Cook set. 
you've got yourself a metal pot and uh, a couple bowls and ladles and stuff in here. Got this from Walmart. Uh, it's not the lightest, but I think uh, I think it's a phenomenal value. I've been using this for a long time. I've cooked a lot of stuff over open fires with it. So this is the heaviest item that I have in this pack. Um, so I'm going to, again, put it right up here at the top. So what I've done here in my pack is I've built a shelf. Now what I would do is my socks and a light jacket and maybe a shirt and underwear would go on the outside of this as I've built it up. So there you go. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about is parasitic drag and where I'm going to load up the rest of this gear here we're going to talk both about parasitic drag and weight distribution. Parasitic drag is when you have loose gear or even straps moving around as you're walking. So uh, this is very important on big rucksacks and packs with a lot of straps. Those straps need to be cinched so that your pack is tight and your whole load is tight. Then the excess of the straps need to be rolled and taped shut because you do not want straps to be swaying. Even such a small change in weight can certainly do damage to your body. And if you're smart and you have water, you already have enough weight movement as it is. So you absolutely want to avoid anything moving that can be helped. Uh, on the Hidden Woodsman pack here on one side, I've got this uh, Council Tool uh, Saddle Axe. And uh, this is a phenomenal uh, bushcraft survival tool, uh, kind of based on the Nesmuk Trio. And... Um, the, having the capability of a double bit axe is incredible. And with that being said, uh, I like having tools that are double purpose. Double bit axe is already double purpose due to the different grind uh, geometries on either end being used for different tasks. But uh, when it comes to a weapon, I certainly would not want to see someone who's very angry and very determined to kill me coming out with one of these. It's a, it's a phenomenal little piece of kit. And you'll notice, since I've got this on the side of my pack, I want to balance it. Again, that weight distribution, not only do you want your weight in this area, but your pack should be as well balanced as you can possibly make it. So I've got um, the 64 ounce clean canteen water bottle that I'll put on the other side. Uh, my wife got me this for my birthday. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to tell you where this is from. Whiskey Trading. or um, Goodness. Uh, I'm going to put the link to where you can buy these saddle axes in the description box below. It's Whiskey River Trading. Phenomenal guys. Uh, great little shop. Great tool. This is Amazon again. And I chose to go with a high speed gear uh, pouch for it because like... High speed gear is known for the pouch is expandable, so you can use a uh, normal size person's water bottle or this big old beast and you're good to go. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you're carrying water, especially if it's in a bottle and not a hydration pack, um, you're going to have water moving around. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's not something that you can really get around. Uh, I choose to carry the steel bottle because I want to boil water. That's something that a lot of tactical guys don't have to think about, but since I'm in more of the tactical bushcraft community, um, I have other things to consider. Now, I would like, this is a good bit of weight, it does balance pretty well with my axe on the opposite side. I would like to have this bottle up higher but uh, I have to do the best that I can with what I have. So that is the setup here. Um, if you're doing an R&R &R bag or a bug out bag, it really should not be much larger than this. Uh, either with a bug out bag or an R&R &R bag, comfort is not really a consideration. You've got to take the minimal amount of kit possible to stay alive. Uh, keep a VS-17 panel in here, water filters, um, fire starting materials. Basically, 
I can have everything that I need in this pack, either for uh, recon and resistance or for bugging out. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, I appreciate you watching. If you can just remember two things, it would be to balance this pack and place this weight in the top corner closest to your closest to your back. If you can do that and you can consider parasitic drag, you are going to be in the top 20% of people when it comes to not getting injured foolishly due to a poor pack layout. Let me know what you think in the comments. I look forward to speaking with you and I hope that you have a blessed day. He ain't dead smart. Played by the United States Marine Fife and the Drum Corps.